building. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Shout out to our online audience who is watching on our YouTube channel. Welcome to WCYE World Changes Youth Experience, where you put the E in WCYE. That's right. You are the experience. Jalen. Yes, sir. What up, big dog? How you feeling in this rain today? I'm feeling good, man. Missed y'all last week, man. Aaron. Where you at? He back there? Yes, sir. 100. That boy brought that word last week, man. I appreciate you. Gave me and Pastor Constance an opportunity to have some R and R, rest and relaxation. You know. Um, I want to talk to you guys today. Of course, we've been talking about maturing emotionally, and for the first time, visitors that are just joining us today, basically what that means is, man is a spirit. You possess a soul, and you live in a physical body. So sometimes your physical body can grow to be 16, 17, 20, 40, 50, 80 years old, but you can be emotionally six, emotionally four, emotionally three. And where that comes from is from your inability or ability to deal with certain issues in your lives. Amen. Let's pray before we get started. Father God, I thank you for these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge flows freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, have your perfect way in the hearts and minds of these young people today. In Jesus' name we pray. All that agree said. So we've been talking about growing up emotionally, and we have a graphic that shows you all of the different steps. There's a total of 10. Today we're getting on number eight, but if we could put that graphic up. Today, we'll be talking about believing in yourself. Now, I know some of you may be saying, we're supposed to be believing in God. Well, of course, we're supposed to believe in God. But if he's in you, one of the tactics that the enemy uses is he tries to make you self-doubt. He tries to make you relate more to your mistakes, relate more to your issues, relate more to your transgressions or the things that you've done wrong to distract you from the fact that Jesus is on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Amen. So you have uh, uh, one of the 10 signs of knowing that you're uh, emotionally mature is you have an open mind. You are accountable. You are flexible. You seek multiple points of views. You stay resilient. You have a calm disposition. Uh, you are, uh, you have, you're approachable. And then the one that we'll be talking about the last one that we'll be talking about is you have a sense of humor. But today, we will be on. You believe in yourself. Now, I got a question for you. What happens when life throws you to the ground? What do you do? What do you do when all seems to be going so chaotic in your life? Everything just seems to be going wrong. Your girlfriend broke up with you. Uh, you lost your job. Mom and dad splitting up, uh, you know, you can't seem to do anything right around the house. You're getting scolded about this, scolded about that. Everything you do that you think is right comes off to be wrong. What do you do? First of all, raise your hand if you've ever had a season like that. Yeah, that's pretty much everybody in this room. What do you do when you've done all you know to do and it's not working? What do you do? When you get so frustrated at everything that's going on around you that you just, well, I can be honest with you. Some people, the enemy hits you so hard that you just want to give up. You want to cave in. You want to quit. And that's when those thoughts of suicide begin to come in. That's when those thoughts of depression begin to come in. And if you meditate or focus on those too long, they'll win. Every day, I believe last year, when I looked at the statistics, just in the state of Georgia, over 800 young people committed suicide. Just in the state of Georgia. We're not talking about Florida or Alabama. We're talking about just in the state of Georgia. I feel like we need to address this thing. So we are equipped by God to deal with everything the enemy throws our way. We are equipped by God to deal with everything the enemy throws our way. The Bible says that he won't put more on you than you can bear. So if it's something that you're going through right now, please trust and believe that you can deal with it. You have right now the capacity to be able to deal with whatever it is that you're going through. 
But the enemy wants to do everything in his power, which he has none except for what you choose to give him. He does everything in his power to try to make you doubt God, to try to make you doubt the strength that's on the inside of you. See, the Bible says greater works will we do in his name, right? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We hear these things, but when does it get to a point where we truly own them, believe them, and walk in them? See, the enemy, he's got no new tricks. He's like the most predictable enemy or foe that you can ever even think about, right? He's going to keep coming at you the same way. What is he going to do? What does the enemy do? Talk. He talks. And how does he talk? What type of words does he use? What's the purpose of him talking to you? He wants to get in your ears, to get into your mind, so that it gets down into your heart, and then it begins to come out in your actions. He wants to talk into your ears so that it gets into your mind, and then it gets into your heart, and then it begins to come out in your actions. I'm going to tell you, and uh, uh, excuse my French, but Satan is a sucker. And it's about time that you guys start treating him like the sucker he is. Clap one time if that makes sense. Clap one time if, he was, if he's a sucker. Okay, then. Let's go ahead and dive into this. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 in the New Living Translation. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 in the New Living Translation. It says, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Clap one time if that scripture is self-explanatory. He's saying that he takes joy in the weaknesses. Why? Why, why would he do that? Well, make that make sense for me. Why would he take joy in, in the hardships, Jalen? Why would he say, okay, it says, that's why I take pleasure in my weakness and, and in the insults and the hardships and in the persecutions and in the troubles that I suffer for Christ. When I am weak, then I am strong. What does that mean? It don't even make, it sound like an oxymoron, don't it? Talk to me. Uh, is it because every time he go through a hardship, he comes out stronger than ever and he can continue to fight for God? Okay. Maybe. Uh, okay. That's, that's, that's almost there. Almost there. Keep going. Unpack it a little bit more. Okay. So I'm guessing because I think it's because he knows if God keeps giving him these hardships, then that means he must be the strongest soldier that he has or one of the strongest soldiers that he has. Hmm. So that means God is entrusting him with these battles because he knows he's going to come out unscathed, still believing in God and probably stronger belief in God. Okay. Let me, let me add some balance. When we're going through things, we have to understand that everything about Christianity is about relationship. Everybody said relationship. Relationship. It's about totally depending on God. Okay. Uh, let's, let's give some definitions. What is pride? God is the devil. Trusting, relying, and depending on self. What is humility? On God. Trusting, relying, and depending on God. So everything about what we do, if I say my name's Anthony Adams and I'm a born-again believer, the expectation should be everything I do, I depend on God for. I don't just depend on self. See, motivational speakers will tell you, you got to believe in yourself. And I'm telling you, you have to believe in yourself. But you have to believe in yourself by way of who's inside of you. Not by your skill, not by your talent, not by your charisma, not by your personality, but by greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So if demons tremble at the mere mention of the name Jesus and you're made in his image and likeness, what do you think they do when they see you? Tremble. Exactly. But the enemy wants to convince you, oh, no, I, I don't, I'm... I'm, I'm shy. I, I, I have 
I have people anxiety over here and I don't like being in large groups and uh, uh, fear this and I fear that and I've got all these fears and you know okay well my dad wasn't in my life pastor and, and you know uh, all I had was my mom and I had to get it how I live and all this other stuff and you got all of those different things and it's like you're saying all of those things as if you've forgotten who you are as believers I need you to constantly be reminded that you are sons and daughters of the Most High God, your kings, your queens, now. And it's not depending upon the mistakes that you made yesterday or the mistakes that you'll even make tomorrow. As a born-again believer, all of your sins have been covered, past, present, watch this, and future. Sin isn't the issue. Your belief is the issue. Once you begin to believe, and move with God the way you're supposed to, everything will begin to fall in line. Clap one time if that makes sense. Need you guys to get that. I'm going to read that scripture again. Put it back up. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. Because this is the heart of this message. This is how you go through. This is how you fight your battles. Put that scripture back up. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. New Living Translation. Is somebody back there? All right. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses. What does it mean to boast? Huh? Yeah, 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 I didn't make the basketball team. Yeah, I'm a senior and I play on the sophomore team or the, the uh, you know, what's the one under the senior team? Yeah, yeah, JV. Yeah, yeah, I play JV and I'm 19. Right? I'm glorying in that. I'm boasting about that. Yeah, she dumped me. Yeah, I tried to get her number and she rejected me. Or, yeah, I tried to uh, try out for this part and I didn't get the part. I brag in those things. He says, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My grace is all you need. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ so that the power of Christ, so that the power of Christ can work through me. It's not you. It's supposed to be him. The issue is we keep trying to get into the way. I'm going to do it. I got this. I know what I want to do. And we never ask, Lord, what is your will for me to do? Does that make sense? I got this. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this. I've been, uh, uh, man, you don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm hard. I've been doing this and I went through this and I went through that and ain't nobody seeing me and ain't nobody doing this and ain't nothing. Ah, blah, 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 blah. None of that stuff mean nothing without Christ because all you're doing is inflicting self, is self-inflicted pain, is self-inflicted trauma, it's self-inflicted battery on yourselves. Because instead of being Christ-centered, you become what? Self-centered. And anytime you're self-centered, you put yourself and set yourself up in a position to take all of the hits of life. No matter what those hits may be. Drug addiction, alcoholism, parents separating, huh? Uh, the, the, the loss of a loved one, huh? All of those different things, right? Go to the next one. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses. I take pleasure in it because I know it's not me. I know he's going to show up each and every time. I know he's always going to be the deliverer. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of my faith. My faith starts and ends with him. So if it starts with him and it ends with him, that means as I grow through it, he's, it's going to be with him too. Does that make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and the insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Your response to how things happen to you should change drastically if you are a believer. If you're a believer, what is it exactly, precisely, do you believe? Is it just something that you say out of cliche because your parents have raised you to say I'm a believer? What is it you believe? Do you truly believe greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Do you even understand what that means? You follow me? We got to get out of our own way, young people. You've got to. Because as long as you stay in the way, 
That's you trusting, relying, and depending on yourself. And the Bible says he resists the proud. Okay? He resists the proud. As a matter of fact, when you look up that scripture, uh, in the Hebrew, the resist word is, is reference to the, the, the tip of a spear. So it's almost like I resist the proud. You understand what I'm saying to you? It's like he's totally against you trusting and relying and depending on yourself because that's not what he created you to do. He created you to trust, rely, and depend on him with your grades, with your GPA, with your future, with all of the fear that you're feeling and all of those different things. He didn't say that these things wouldn't come. Let me tell you something. Every day you wake up, trouble is going to be in that day. But how you respond to it, how you move, your mentality when it happens is what matters. Clap one time if that makes sense. Philippians 4 and 13, everybody should know that scripture. What does it say? Huh? Say it loud. I can what? I can what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What can I do? All things. Through what? Christ. It's a relationship. It's, it's written in the Bible thousands of times. We need God. With God, I can do all things. Without God, I'm fearful. With God, I can do all things. Without God, I'm afraid. With God, man, I'm flowing. Everything's moving the way it's supposed to be moving. And even, that, even though the trouble comes, how I move against it is like it didn't even phase me. Without God, everything affects you. This person didn't speak to me. Uh-uh, she acting funny. Uh-uh, what's going on with this? Uh-uh, you ain't even said this. Uh-uh, but yesterday you was acting like this, and today you acting like this. And I can do all things through Christ. The problem is, a lot of the things that young people do and older people do, you wouldn't even think about putting it through Christ. You see, here's the dilemma, Jalen. We have what we want to do, and we have what God wants us to do. And a lot of times, Jalen, it ends up clashing. That makes sense? Yes, sir. It ends up clashing because in my mind, I got fixed all I want to do based off of what I've been exposed to, right? And how does exposure come? Exposure comes through your eye gate, through your ear gate, what you see, what you hear, right? And it gets into your emotions, which is what we're talking about today. And emotions are very powerful because I feel I feel this. I don't feel like cleaning. I don't feel like going to school. I don't feel like waking up and going to church. I don't feel like, I don't feel like, I don't feel like. Feelings are very real. And if you're not careful and you don't know how to harness them, they will harness you. Clap one time if that makes sense. You see, your feelings are given to you as a gift so that you can enjoy life. It's like, uh, like when somebody sends you a text message, your phone goes, ding. What do they call that ding? What is that called? A notification. A notification. Your emotions are given to you by God as a notification to let you know something is either good or something is either bad. Okay? Something, uh, uh, how many times have you seen in movies or in real life, you go in, something just don't feel right. Right? Something just don't feel right about this. I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. See, he's given it to you as a notification system. It helps, you, it helps notify you when something is good and when something is bad. Now imagine if that system has control over you, where it's saying to you, not you saying to it, but it's saying to you, right? This is good. Let's go over here and go this way because it feels like this. Because you still got, I got to do this illustration. I do it all the time, but I, I, I need to do it again. Come here, DD. Come here, Daniel. Come here, Jelly. I need you to see this. Here, here, here. Face down. All right. This is the spirit. This is the soul. This is the body. This is the part of you that we dress up. You put that Amiri on, you put them J's on, you understand what I'm saying? You put that graphic tee on with some tight jeans, not too many holes, but a couple of holes, rip, rip, holes, rip, rip, not too much skin. Show. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you put a lot of 
attention. You put the, 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 the jewelry on, you put the bracelets on, you put the watch on, you make sure the hair is fluffed out, he got his crown on. You know, I mean, you got soft hair. <laughs> oh man, I always thought, I don't know why I thought it was a little harder. Anyway, right? Bird's nest, oh my goodness. She tried it, didn't she? <laughs> All right, so this is the body part. This is the one where you look into a physical mirror, you see a reflection of yourself. This is your soul. A lot of times people confuse your soul with your spirit as if it's the same thing. It's not. Clap one time if that makes sense. All right, so this is your soul. This is your thinker, your feeler, your emotions. It's where you're happy. It's where you're sad. It's where you're angry. It's where you're passionate. It's where you're excited. All of that happens where? In your soul. And this right here, Mr. Bogart, somebody take a picture, cool. <laughs> Mr. Bogart is spirit. This is the part of you that once you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal savior, became just like God. This is the part of you, this is who you are. So when I say man is a, you possess a, and you live in a, man is tripart being, one, two, three. Clap one time if that makes sense. So here's how life goes. Trouble comes. Situations come, right? The Holy Spirit resides in this part of you, right? This part of you is where your emotions and everything is. And this is the part of you that everybody gets to become acquainted with. Clap one time if that makes sense. So when trouble comes, your physical eyes see the trouble. And there's a whole bunch of stuff involved in that. You've got chemicals called dopamine uh, and different things like that. That uh, 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 dopamine is like a, a pleasure chemical that's released into your, huh? It, it represents excitement. So like when you, uh, uh, and you do a puzzle and you put the piece in the right spot, dopamine is released. When you're on a roller coaster and you're getting ready to go down that roller, or you're going up the roller coaster and you feel that, uh-oh, we're almost there. Dopamine is being released. When there's a girl that I like and you see her, dopamine is released. There's a guy that I like, dopamine is released. So a lot goes on in this part. Clap one time if that makes sense. We ain't even got to the soul part yet. Okay? The soul part of you is the part that feels. It's the part of you that cares. It's the part of you that you know, it's where all of those emotions are, right? So he sees the girl. This part of you begins to, and sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. It depends on how far along gone you are. You understand what I'm saying? This part sees the girl. This part wants to know about the girl and either has anxiety, right? Or boldness to want to move. This part of you, after you've accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, is trying to communicate with this part, yay and nay. Right? But what happens is with young people, and older people in, uh, included, myself included, this part seems to, the flesh part, right? This part seems to always want to just do what it wants to do. And it seems to be teamed up with this part of you. So y'all come over here. So what happens is, while you're over here, it's just the soul and the body, and it's seeing things coming its way that it wants to get involved with. It's seeing these things, and it's feeling some type of way. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of the what? Where's the mind at? Here. This is the part of you that has to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when this part is going towards something that the spirit know it ain't ready for, this is what happened. Come over here and try to pull her back. Not too hard. Now resist. I don't want to. I don't want to. No, I don't want to. Look at her. She's fine. I don't want to. Get off of me. I don't want to go to church. Stop saying to me what Pastor Anthony be saying. I don't care nothing about what he be talking about. I want to talk to old girl. Let me go. Let me go. This part goes and indulges. And before you know it, the young man then snuck out his house. Mama come in to the room at night to say goodnight. <laughs> Christopher, goodnight. Why you look so lumpy? 
Why you look so lumpy? Christopher, are you just, ooh! Give me a father's name. Who? 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 Daniel. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. Daniel! Chris gone. What? Where you at? I don't know, but his window wide open. I knew that boy was out there sneaking out the house out there trying to get some strange. What you mean strange? What's strange? Lois, don't worry about it. Tell me what strange is. If you don't know about it, you don't need to know about it. I'm going to go get my baby boy, go see what's going on with him. Go out there. Can't find your son. Three hours later. He comes sneaking his butt back up in there, moving the pillows out the way, trying to get back in the bed like nothing happened. He get in the bed and he's like, my bed feel different. He look over, there's Daniel, his daddy, <laughs> looking at him. What's up, Chris? Daddy! Man, I was, oh, I must have been sleepwalking. You know how y'all come up with them automatic lies. Kids can be so creative sometimes, can't they? Just come up, I mean, off the, just, just off rip, just off the top of the dome, just come up with, oh, I, was, I, I started sleepwalking two years ago. Mama ain't tell you, y'all ain't been talking, so I guess that's why. No, no, listen, right? You try to do everything to divert from the reality. So now you're in trouble because now you've lost something with your parents that is really hard to get. What's that? Now they don't trust you. Why? Because you lie. And you didn't even have to. And the whole time, one third of you was like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But when you're not paying attention to the spirit part of you or this part of you isn't getting any word or this part of you isn't being transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? The world says this. What does God have to say about it? I'm going to focus on what God says about it. And then when I focus on that, it renews me and I'm now transformed. So now here's how it goes when I'm transformed. Come over here. There's a girl that I like. You see the girl. Now it's up. All of a sudden it's the thought. She cute. But something don't feel right. <laughs> what you, what did you say? No. Don't. Don't do it. Right? You better leave that girl alone. She ain't nothing but poison. Right? So you're sitting there and now it's like, yeah, she cute. But I'm going to avoid that whole situation. But the, the problem is that whole situation actually happened and it happens all the time. You're warring with yourself, right? You're warring because the enemy is constantly talking to this part and this part trying to suggest certain things, just like he did in the Garden of Eden. He has no new tricks. These are the same tricks he's been using. Did God say don't eat of every tree? Surely he knows that as soon as you eat of that tree that you'll be just like, come on. You'll be just like him. They were already just like him. The enemy want to come in and start starting controversy, doubt. He wants to suggest that there's more to the story that you just don't know. The day that you'll eat of this apple, or, or not the apple, but of this tree, uh, then you'll be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. Well, God had already told them that. Right? Same thing happens today. God has already told you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But how many young people in here fear the future? You understand? But he's told you no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You go to Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. Says the Lord, there are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. He's telling you these things, but the problem is what we want to do clashes with what God wants to do. Clap one time if that makes sense. Thank y'all, appreciate you. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, which means you're gonna be all right. Chill. Watch this. Relax. But I feel fear. But God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. 
So when you sense fear, what should you do? Could somebody tell me, because y'all got to do this. Huh? Speak? Speak what? Huh? Truth? Life? Speak life. How do you speak life? What's life? A sound mind, like just reaffirming words. Okay. So let me give you an example of it. I'm afraid. <clears throat> I feel fear, but out of my mouth I say, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. But it didn't go away. I still feel it, so I say it again. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. But I still feel fear. For God has not given me the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Didn't, for me, when I was young, I used to get back. Let me define that. Power, what type of power? What does power mean? It's the ability to get things done. Love, unconditional love, it's, it's, it's me being able to love what's not lovely. That means that I have to put myself in a position where I'm able to cater to things that are trying to hurt me and treat it with love, treat it with care, because I can't fight fire with fire. That was my biggest issue growing up. If you punch me in my face, I'm going to hit you with a brick. That was my mentality. If you kick me, I'm going to get a baseball bat and hit you upside your head. Full swing. That was my mentality. So everything about that mentality <laughs> was totally against who God was creating me to be. Thank God the, the sentence that they tried to give me, I was freed from. Anthony Adams, we're going to sentence you to 22 years to life in prison because you're out here, you're stealing cars, you're robbing folks, and you're doing all this stupid stuff. We're going to sentence you. We don't care nothing about the 34-year-old the you or the 42-year-old you. We don't care nothing about that. What you did right now, we're going to hold you accountable for. And I had to sit there and I had to say, yes, sir, because what you don't do is go back and forth with the judge. You just don't do it unless you want more time, right? But I didn't know. I didn't know all the stuff that I'd be doing today. You would have told me when I was 16 years old, do you know that you're going to be a youth pastor and you're going to minister to thousands of teenagers around the world? Did you know that you're going to impact and prevent a lot of young people from going down the same path that you did? You know what I would have told you if you had told me that when I was 16 years old? Boy, you got me bent. All the way bent. That ain't never going to be me. You got the wrong one, Jack. You understand? But now I'm walking in it. Pastor Ant, what's your point? When you're walking in a relationship with Jesus Christ, there's a level of trust for your future, just like Jeremiah 29, 11 says. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. When I was out there doing all of those disastrous things, it was totally against the will of God for my life. Thank God I had enough sense to say, stop, enough's enough. I told my co-defendant, I said, hey, man, when we get up out of here, I'm done. I don't want nothing to do with you when I get up out of here. And I held true to that promise. That co-defendant, we both were released at the same time. Uh, Dr. Dollar allowed the judge to come here to do a prayer uh, in service over in the dome. And we ended up getting five years probation and 17 weekends in jail. Praise God. Under something called the First Offenders Act. <clears throat> After that was done, I had five years probation. I completed that five years and I never looked back. My co-defendant, I just had to send him $100 yesterday. He served almost 11 years in prison. He won't be out until 2027. And every time we talk, we talk about how he's going to come and he's going to speak to the young people. God ain't forgot him neither. But there are natural consequences for the decisions that we make. It's not a magic trick. God isn't just going to automatically abracadabra. You got to choose him. 
You got to get to the point where you say to yourself and you say to the world and all of the people that are around you, I don't care about what y'all got going on. I care about what I've got going on with him. Because I can't interact with you until I learn how to interact with him. Once I got this relationship straight, all these other relationships will fall into place. Clap one time if that makes sense. I spoke to my co-defendant yesterday. And uh, we both grew up here. I've been at this church since I was six years old. I'm 42 now. Do the math. You understand what I'm saying? And one of the things, growing up, my mom had it hard because I was a horrible child. I was, I was bad, to say the least. Dennis the menace ain't have nothing on me. I was angry. I was upset. I was upset, and I was finding reasons to be upset. I was upset because I had to move here from New York, and all my family was uh, in uh, New York, and I had to move here by myself, and it's just me, right? I, I was upset because I was light-skinned, and in Georgia, dark skin rules. <laughs> I had to learn that quick, you know? And I was upset because, you know, being light-skinned, I had to do above and beyond in a bad way to show that I wasn't a punk. You understand? Clap one time if that makes sense. It was bad, but I had to make a decision for myself. Each and every one of you have to make a decision for yourself. You graduates who are getting ready to leave and you're getting ready to go to college or you're getting ready to go on to the next phase of life. It may not be college. It may be a technical school or it may be getting a job. Whatever the case may be, understand that the accountability level goes to another level. You know what that means? It means when you're at home and you do something bad, it's give me your phone. It's turn the TV off. It's no, you can't go. But as an adult, the consequences shift. And the consequences hit a lot quicker. That's not to put fear in you. If you're doing it on your own, you're fearful. If you're doing it with God, you got this. You're going to be all right. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I serve the God. You, you, you understand? You start building yourself up, but you got to know the word to build yourself up in it. Does that make sense? Repeat after me. Say no fear. No fear. Here. Say no fear. No fear. Here. Say it louder. Say no fear. No fear. Here. Here. There's a plan for everyone in here. God has a plan for you. The issue is the the resistance people keep running into is that our plans usually clash into God's plans and we have to choose. We are all on a journey. All of us are on a journey, right? We all have one destination, but each and every one of us have different paths of how we get there. Dr. Dollar used it like this. He said, if you're going from Georgia to L.A., and you're driving, we call that a what? A road trip. Road trips are fun, right? Uh, my family and I just went to, uh, to the Bahamas, so we had to drive to Orlando, get on the boat at Port Canaveral, Port Canaveral, whatever it's called, and hop on the boat, and we went all over the seas and all that different stuff. But the road trip was fun. Well, that's a water trip. Huh? That's a water trip. A water trip. I'm talking about going to. Oh, yeah. It was a six-hour trip. The kids were asleep most of the time. So was I as I was driving, which is why we were swerving so much. Anyway, but the point, the point that I'm trying to make is, on that journey, we had to pull over. We had to get gas. You know, my niece Precious wanted some chips. Riley may have wanted something to drink. Constance, after we just left a bathroom, and we get back on the road, and I'm like, yeah, we finna go. We need to pull over. Why? I've got to pee. We just left the restroom, babe. I've got to pee. So we pull over again. Life is the same way. A lot of times, young people, you're going you're gonna to pull over. You may catch a flat tire. You may need to get something to eat. 
Sometimes you're just tired and you need to rest. And what happens is in life, people judge you when you pull over. Well, you're supposed to, you got to trust God. You got to trust God. You got to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe. It's like, I'm still on a journey. I had to pull over because I'm injured. Learn how to take time to care for yourself. Know when it's time to renew your mind. Pastor Anthony has to renew his mind sometimes 15, 20 times a day. Why? Because if I don't renew my mind, then Anthony going to pop up. And you don't want 17-year-old Anthony popping up trying to handle something with a, as a 42-year-old situation, do you? That ain't pretty. That's, uh, that's pretty ugly is what it is. Why? Because I've matured. I am not the man that I used to be. So to prevent people from experiencing that, I got to get in his word. And I have to get it in my heart, get it in my mind, meditate on it, get it down into my heart so that what the people see when they interact with me is him. When people see you, they should see a reflection of God. Period. Everything about being a believer is about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you trust him? Do you depend on him? Do you rely on him? I use this example and I'll use it again. Everybody in here, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. To your feet. Now sit down. Okay, so when you sat down, you showed trust in the chairs that you sat in, yes? Yes. Why do you trust the chairs? Huh? Because you know it can hold your weight. Do you know that since you were born, you've been conditioned to know about these chairs that you're sitting in right now? Not these specific chairs, but the art of chairs. Right? Chairs are made for what? Sitting. When you were in preschool, you had the little cute little, what you call those little, the little mini chairs? Right. And then uh, when you go into elementary school, you, they were still small, but they was a little bit bigger. Right. And then when y'all had I used to hate this. I used to go to the kids school for parent teacher meetings and they'd be like, have a seat. And I'm like, where? <laughs> I said, you can have a seat while the teacher sits in the I'm like, well, you, you ain't bring no big boy chairs up in here. I'm, I'm doing what I look like. I'm about to sit in that chair. But the whole point is you sat in that chair because of what you know of that chair. Do you know enough about God to trust him? Do you know him enough to trust him? Or are you just, well, Pastor Ant said it, so it must be so. No, I'm talking about an intimate, personal relationship with Christ. Do you know him enough to trust him for yourself? We ain't even getting to the part where it's laying hands on people and, oh, 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 yeah, breakthrough, yeah, breakthrough. Then you leave and go and do the same thing again. No, I'm talking about on the very surface level. Do you know him enough to trust him? Because as much as that part of it is involved, it's not the main thing. The main thing is you understanding what you say out your mouth you believe. Does that make sense? I'll let, I lay hands on you and you shout and jump and ah, pass out and all that stuff. All that stuff is cool. But do you understand him? And after someone lays their hand on you and you do all that, do you understand what just happened to you? Clap one time if that makes sense. All right. We're all on a journey. Have, have patience with your journey. But one thing you are to never do is get off that path. Don't get off that journey. Sometimes you need to pull over to reset. Sometimes you need to pull over to get in that word or gas up. Huh? Sometimes the car needs an alignment. Why do cars get alignments, fellas? If a girl answers it, say it again. Huh? 
tires, okay? A car has to get an alignment to prevent malfunctions prematurely. So if I get four brand new tires, right, and I don't get an alignment, those tires that were supposed to last me three to four years will probably last me about 60 days. Y'all yep. did know that, right? Yep. If, clap one time if you knew that. <laughs> clap one time if you didn't know that. Okay, good, now you know. Anytime you get tires, always say, hey, do I need an alignment? Because what'll happen is your tires will look good on the outside, but the part that's on the inside by the engine will be worn out because you just didn't get a simple alignment. Sometimes, young people, not sometimes, but you have to align yourself to prevent premature mechanical failures. Does that make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. Get aligned. Renew your mind. I got. I got. I got. I need an alignment. Okay, and ain't, ain't ain't nobody got no hell to put you in or no heaven to put you in. So don't worry about what people think or what people say. Bump all that. You know the journey that you're on. You know the path that you're on. The biggest thing that you need to know is the God that's on the inside of you. Because that's what dictates and what changes how you move, how you groove, how you respond to things that happen to you. Clap one time if that makes sense. Romans 8, 28, New Living Translation. It says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. That means all of the bad things, like when Pastor Anthony was going through all of those things and making all of those stupid, horrible decisions, robbing people, uh, fighting people, doing all that stupid stuff, God used all of that stuff and caused it to work together for my good. So now, <laughs> I, I share this all the time. I remember when I first graduated Bible school, I was upset with Dr. Dollar and Pastor Taffy because Jalen, they sent me to Norcross because we had a location out there in Norcross. So when I went out there to Norcross, I'm going out there to Norcross and I'm Pastor Anthony, you know, hey, hey man, I'm Ant and I'm out there and I'm like, hey man, y'all gotta stop doing this and stop doing that. And they're like, what? Well, we need help with calculus. We don't do any of those hood rat things. And I'm like, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> right. I'm like, okay, uh, let's, um, anyway, let's just teach the word here, you know, because my testimony wasn't hitting there. But when I say he causes all things to work for his good, every preacher can't go to God be road and walk right into the trap and minister Jesus. I can. Every preacher can't go to the grungiest parts of Atlanta, go in there and speak Jesus. I can. I'm not saying that to boast about me. I'm saying that to boast about how good God is on the inside of me and how when I was going through that hell and my mind didn't even see the future, God knew it. And once I just decided to trust him, I was able to walk in the plan that he has for me and not in the plan that I have for myself. Clap one time if that makes sense. Amen. First John 3, 19, and we're going to go down through 24. First John 3, 19 through 24. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with him, and he with them. And we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us. He's in us. And when you can acknowledge Philemon 1 and 6, I believe it is, it says that your faith becomes effectual. Effectual means work. Your faith begins to work once you acknowledge the good that's in you. Acknowledge he's in you. Think about it. Fellas, you're getting ready to make a bad decision with this, this female, right? 
it hit different once you know it's not I'm about to do something with this girl. It's we about to do something with it. Uh-oh. Oh, Lord. It hit different. You understand? Ladies, same thing with you. It hit different. When you're about to do that thing, understand that when you do that thing, you're doing it with him on the inside of you. And here's the crazy part about it that I never got because I kept trying to understand him through worldly relationships and not godly. You understand? See, worldly love is conditional. Godly love is unconditional. While I was doing most of the things I was doing, do you know he was protecting me? Do you know that while I was out there doing all that stupid stuff, he was right there and there was times where people had weapons pointed at me and, and pulled triggers and it misfired? I know that that was God. I know he's real. I'm fully convinced, fully persuaded. I need no further persuasion. God is real. The problem is the fully, pers the fully persuasion that I have I can't do that for you. You got to do that for you. You've got to believe for you. So when all these attacks start coming, you've got to believe that God is real for yourself. I can't do that for you. I can be very convincing about how much I believe it, but that only goes so far. You have to make a choice. You have to make a decision. Clap one time if that makes sense. 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians 13 and 12. And I'll be done. First Corinthians 13 and 12. It says, now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. What he's saying is when you look in the mirror, you shouldn't see yourself. You should see him. When you look into the mirror, you shouldn't see yourself. You should see him. But Pastor Ann, when I look into the mirror, all I see is myself. What do I do? Keep looking. How many of you have ever done that? Just gone in the bathroom, close the door, your mom. What you doing in that bathroom? Just, you know, me time. <laughs> I hope. But sometimes, man, I would just stare in the mirror. I'm like, this is what people see when they see me. Man, I got an Eddie that just keep growing back. <laughs> My barber do a good job of trying to hide it, but when I was about 12 years old, I learned how to grab a little razor. My mama had razors that she would use for her legs. <laughs> I know, that's nasty. I would take it. But then as 15, 16, after I started experiencing more life, I would go back to that mirror and I would look into the mirror and sometimes I didn't even recognize the person that I saw staring back at me. I'm not going to ask you to clap if you've ever been in that situation because I know that you have. And then if you haven't, you will. But you look in that mirror and you're not even quite sure of who's looking back at you. What I had to do was I had to dive headfirst into the word of God. And in that moment, I said, this is corny. This is fake. I'm the alpha. I'm the big dog. I'm, 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 I'm. And the more and more I move like that, the more and more life began to destroy me. You know how many times I considered taking myself up out of here? And it wasn't just me considering it. It was the enemy in my ear constantly. Look what you did. You're embarrassing Dr. Dollar. They done took you into their family and you're out here robbing folks. Look what you did to that young man. Hey, that's somebody's, that's somebody's son. That's somebody's grandson. That's somebody's nephew. Look what you did. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. 
on the outside, I'm, I got to keep up appearances because the crew I'm running with is, they all gone, but they don't know Jesus. But they're all dependent on me because I know Jesus, but I'm not acting like I know him. So just off of my experiencing, my experience of knowing Jesus, I was put into a leadership position with the crew that was just waiting for me to go. Guys, we got to stop what we're doing. God is real. It didn't happen then. But now, every one of them that's not dead or in prison, right, they call me. And you give me hope. Because if you can change, I can change. And when I feel weak, I pull my strength from you. Well, it's not me that they're pulling it from. It's the God in me that they're pulling it from. And all they have to do is accept them. So you got some people that'll say out of their mouth, I accept Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. But it'll stop at just the saying. And when trouble comes, they always revert back to the thing that they know to do. Clap one time if that makes sense. What I'm trying to get you guys to do is understand who you are. Believe in yourself because Christ is in you. Don't let the enemy have you looking in the mirror trying to figure out if you are what the haters say you are. You're not. <laughs> Start to say something. Forget them. I mean that. Screw what people got to say about you. The same people with something negative to say about you are the same people that got something negative to say about themselves. And stop hanging around fake friends that in your face make you, oh, that my partner, twin, 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 nah, 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 nah. When deep down they jealous of everything you do, everything you say, everything you, how you walk, how you talk. They talking about it. Oh man, look at your shoes. Oh man, look at your hair. What'd you just say, bro? You so lame. What'd you just, what'd you, what, 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 yeah. Is this making sense? I need you guys to get this. Because that's how you know. You're maturing emotionally. How do I know, Pastor Ant? You know you're maturing emotionally. When you can, I believe in me. I believe, on the, I believe in the God in me. So don't get it twisted. When I say you believe in you, it's not just because of you. You're supposed to believe in you because God is in you. And when people see you, who do they, who are they supposed to see? God. Him. Amen. Clap one time if that makes sense. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I want to, um, I want to, um, We've got 1,400 teenagers registered for this conference, which means in less than 35 days, this building will be packed with your peers. What is it you think they need to know? What is it you think they need to know? What is it you need to know? When you're hurt, when you're broken, it seems like all hell done broke loose. You're confused. It helps to know God is not the author of confusion when you feel confused. But at this conference, I'm expecting for it to set a standard that will never go beneath. 
going to raise the bar really high with our production team from the cameras to the hosting to the lights because all that stuff is you know is good but it's how you present God's word that'll make a lasting impression one of the leaders from when I was a teenager, his name's Darnell Anderson. He's in here, and one of the things that he may not remember is how I remember him, his wife. Well, they, he, she wasn't his wife then, but they would have these canes, right? And they were wrapped in, like, tape, and they would get up there, and they would... And as a teenager, I'd be there like... I would never do that, but that looked cool. That looked, that's what's up. And even something as little as that intrigued me to take ownership and godly pride in my church. It made me want to be here. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's Jalen being up here. I don't know if it's the host that come up here. I don't know if it's the kids on the camera, the kids in the sound booth. I don't know what it is, <clears throat> but something is going to trigger the God in you to begin to come out. And when that happens, revival will take place. What does revival mean? It means you'll go into your classrooms at school when school comes back, and you won't even have to say nothing. And friends that you know in your friend circle will begin to cry and weep in front of you. And they'll begin to come and pull off the anointing on your life. Just like my friends did when I was younger. They'll begin to pull from the anointing on your life because they don't, they, your behavior isn't adding up to, to, to the God that's on the inside of you. But, but that God that's on the inside of you is, is, is vibrant and it's, it's contagious. And even if you try to suppress him, he just, he just comes out like sweat. That's going to be triggered. I declare and I decree it right now in Jesus' name that the greatness on the inside of each and every one of you will begin to reveal itself. I bind every satanic and demonic spirit that tries to wrap its fingers around your head. I bind them. Loose them and let them go free. These are king's kids. And they will fulfill the will of God for their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout to the top of your lungs. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God some praise in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need you guys to own your relationship with Jesus. He's real. He's a way maker. Huh? Come on. What else is he? He's a comforter. He's a friend. He's a protector. He's everything you need him to be. You just have to acknowledge that he is who he says he is. Amen. You're powerful. But everything in this world and everything about your power is voice activated. Open up your mouth and speak what he says instead of speaking what you see, instead of speaking what you hear. We already hear, little baby. We don't need you to re recite his verse. Recite to these people healing that's trying to kill themselves. Re speak life into people. Amen? If you're out there today and you hadn't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, Jalen <laughs> is going to lead you in the prayer of salvation. So all you have to do is repeat after him. I see my wife coming up. Am I missing something? Can we get some round of applause for that just real quick, just real quick, just real quick? Yes, 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 yes.
as they take mm. an embrace. If you haven't accepted Lord as your personal savior, I just want you to repeat after these words. Say, Father God, I am made new. You have given me a new life. I thank you for your presence. I give you thanks for your blessing in my life. And I pray that I can touch people so they can know your blessings too. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Amen. Y'all give it up. I wanted to shock Anthony.